It's now half a year since Guantanamo's prisoners began their hunger strike. The U.S. military says that the self-imposed starvation protest is waning because inmates have been eating after dusk, as is tradition in the holy month of Ramadan. But painful force-feeding procedures and invasive body searches are still part of the daily routine for many of the prisoners. Here's our Washington correspondent, Guyana Chichiken. Every day in Guantanamo, it's Groundhog Day, whether you're a guard or a prisoner. That's how one officer described life at Gitmo. Every day is the same as the last, and there is no escape. For many inmates, it's a painful routine. Routine that includes regular searches and force feeding twice a day for those who are on hunger strike. The latest account from the prison comes from a British resident named Shakar Amar. He's been held for 11 years at Gitmo, never charged with any crime. Shakar has been on hunger strike since January. He has also refused to leave his cell. He writes, I have said what I want to do, just sit there for a week doing nothing, just sitting. It's about as nonviolent, non-problematic protest as you could imagine. But they won't let me do it. So the forcible cell extraction team carries him out of the cell, his hands and feet in shackles, to a special place where they perform a search, a pat-down, which Shakar Amar and other inmates call the Gitmo massage. They flip me over for the surge. Mostly, that's just an assault, sometimes a sexual assault. We call it the Gitmo massage. They carry me like a sack of potatoes, which is really painful for me. Guantanamo officials actually responded to our inquiry about Shakar Amr's allegations by saying, we don't comment on any detainee allegations made through their defense attorneys, regardless of how ridiculous and absurd the allegations might be. By saying this, Guantanamo officials may be suggesting that Shucker's allegations are ridiculous and absurd. Could be. But nonetheless, Gitmo has a history of torture and abuse, which Washington has tried to cover up by hiding behind state secrets privilege. If you listen to the officials, you're led to believe life at Gitmo is not so bad. The inmates can watch cable TV, they're well-fed, and force-feeding is not as bad as it sounds, no matter what the UN says. After all, they use a lubricant to shove the feeding tube down the detainees' nostrils. To make sure the detainees don't resist, of course, they strap them to a chair. On the receiving end, that is, on the detainees' end, it's, of course, a completely different story. They report pain, humiliation, and despair. That's their routine. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekam. Guantanamo Bay is already the world's most expensive prison, but new data from the U.S. Defense Department shows the bill is running even higher than previously thought. Now, the facility opened in 2002, and its overall price tag will top $5 billion by next year. Keeping 166 inmates housed at the prison means U.S. taxpayers are picking up a tab of over a million dollars every single day. Guantanamo Bay is located in Cuba, so the U.S. has uh, to spend uh, plenty of cash on shipping food, materials and flying personnel. Here's how the total tab breaks down for this year, with a big share of the spending allocated to prison staff and security guards. Another large chunk of taxpayers' funding goes to maintaining a high-security war court. Keeping the prison running, meanwhile, seems to serve as a recruitment tool for terrorists worldwide. That's what the Senior Counterterrorism Council for Human Rights Watch told us. The problem that we have with Guantanamo, that as long as it remains open, as long as the U.S. engages in this 11 years plus regime of illegal detention, then terrorists will continue to have a very powerful tool for recruitment in order to say to, to young disaffected men throughout the affected regions, look at what the United States is doing to your brothers. Look at what the United States claimed it would stop doing. Because of course the men in Guantanamo and people around the world know that President Obama pledged to close Guantanamo within one year of taking office. And that was four and a half years ago and there's no closure in sight. There's a very simple way to close it down and that's either prosecute people for whom there's sufficient evidence of crimes in legitimate courts like the U.S. federal courts and release the others. That has always been the way to close Guantanamo. The prisoners began refusing food because they're being detained without charge and want more humane treatment. The UN Special Repertoire for Torture tried to find out more about their conditions, but he told us that the Pentagon only offered him a very limited tour of the facility. Unfortunately, uh, I was not allowed to visit uh, Guantanamo Bay. Uh, at least not in the terms uh, that I have to apply under the rules uh, that I am uh, subject to. 
I, I did get invited by the Pentagon, uh, but on conditions that I couldn't accept because uh, conditions was that I would see only the parts of the prison that they wanted to show me, and specifically that I could not have individual meetings with, uh, with inmates. They claim that they can only give me the same terms that they give uh, United States legislators, for example, uh, or that they give journalists or other visitors. But I am the, the United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, and the terms of visits to detention centers that I apply have been approved by the Human Rights Council. Uh, so I'm not asking the United States to give me any preferential treatment, but I also cannot give the United States preferential treatment either.